90. A hundred. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm from the apartment downstairs. Oh, don't tell me my exercising was coming through your ceiling. No, no, no. I didn't hear a sound, really. Oh, that's too bad. I was hoping someone would complain. It'd give me an excuse to stop. <laughs> well, Ed, come on in. Yeah, thanks. I'm uh, Mary Richards. Hi, I'm Barbara Gardner. Oh, well, welcome to the building. I'm sure you'll be uh, very happy here. Everybody's very friendly. When'd you move in? About a year ago. <laughs> oh, I don't want you to think I'm antisocial or anything. It's just that I'm always sleeping when everybody's working, and I'm always working when everybody's sleeping. Oh, uh, what is it that you do? Uh, well, no, you, listen, you don't have to no, answer that. No, I... I, uh, have some coffee heating. Would you like yeah, some? Yeah, I'd love some. No, I play piano at Mickey's Keyboard Lounge. You know, over near the University of Minnesota campus. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. listen, I'll have to drop in and hear you play sometime. Well, you better hurry. I'm getting married. Well, just think, I'll never have to play I Left My Heart in San Francisco again. Or uh, on Wisconsin ten times a night. On Wisconsin? Yeah, this guy kept coming in and bugging me to play it. Oh, yeah. I guess you have to put up with a lot of weirdos in a place like that. Yeah, he turned out to be the guy I'm marrying. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Well, congratulations. I don't know. I've never seen him in the daylight. I'm just kidding. Hey, this is really a cute apartment. Oh, thank you. It's just the one room, though. I wish it were bigger. Well, you should take a look at mine, then. I mean, I haven't fixed it up half as nice as this, but it's good-sized. I was wondering, do you have any cardboard boxes around? Oh, no, gee, I don't. But I'll tell you, I could pick some up here on Friday when I do my weekend marketing. Oh, thanks, but I'll be on my honeymoon by then. Oh, where are you going? Milwaukee. <laughs> oh, well, I, uh, I hear the brewery tour is interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, what the travel agent said. But we don't care about that kind of stuff. That's why we're going to Milwaukee. Joe says, why waste a lot of good scenery on your honeymoon? Oh. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. I've never been on one. Well, hang in there. I mean, if I can meet the right man at Mickey's Keyboard Lounge in the midst of the biggest bunch of losers you ever saw, one night, I'll listen to this, one night this guy comes in. And I recognize him. He does the news on TV. Beautiful clothes, good-looking, silver hair. Silver hair? Yeah. You've seen him. You've seen him. Yeah, what'd he do? Well, he sat there nursing a cream de menthe on the rocks for about an hour, asks me to play the entire score from South Pacific <laughs> while he sings it. Uh -huh. When he gets to, I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair, he completely cleared the room. <laughs> then he reaches in his pocket and pulls out a single dollar bill and oh. puts it in the jar I've got on the piano and takes out 75 cents change. <laughs> All right. Right, Ted. Ted Baxter. He does the news on Channel 12. How'd you know? I work with him. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> no, listen, he's really, he's not such a bad guy when you get to know him. He's, he's just very frugal. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that 25 cents he gave you could be something of a collector's item. I believe it. Well, look, this has been very pleasant. Though. I've got a pack. Thanks a lot for the coffee. You're welcome. Listen, it would have been fun knowing you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, uh, I don't suppose you could make it to my wedding tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. I'd love to, but I'll be working. So will I. I'm the entertainment at our reception. <laughs> Bye. One, two, three. There. Oxium? What's that supposed to be? An extinct Egyptian bird. <laughs> You're bluffing. Look it up. All right, I will. You think I won't? I'm going to. Hey, Phyllis, what do you know about that apartment downstairs is for rent? Why should I know anything about it? Well, you're always barging in every place else. <laughs> the girl who's moving out says it's very roomy. Oxalic, oxen, it is roomy. Oxide, ox lip. Then you have barged in there. No oxium. Take off your tiles. Okay. But the oven timer hasn't gone off yet. I still have some time left. Take off your tiles. Now, wait a minute. Phyllis, you took at least 45 seconds to stroll over to the dictionary oh. and then browse through it. You oh. did. So I have at least that much time coming to me, right? Give her another minute, Mary. What good will it do her? So tell us about that apartment. Oh, well, it's really the nicest one in the building. Except for mine, of course. It, it has a big bedroom, a fireplace, a glass-in sun deck, a beam ceiling. Gee, Ooh. it sounds terrific. Hey, listen, girls. We can't let a great apartment like that go to just anyone. Maybe I ought to call Robert Redford, see if he needs a place. <laughs> now, we really should try to get somebody who's nice to get along with in that apartment. Somebody clean, 
considerate, understanding, thrifty, brave, and trustworthy. <laughs> you know who we've just described? Who? Uh-huh. <laughs> Gee, I would love to have a bedroom. You have any idea what that place rents for? $225. So, who needs a bedroom? <laughs> Take off your tiles. Wait, I, I have a word here. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't you two move in together? Mary, you're paying uh, $125, and, and Rhoda's paying $87.50. I should think between the two. Uh, how do you know what my rent is? It was just a wild guess. <laughs> No, no, Phil. No, no. Ninety bucks might be a wild guess. Eighty-seven fifty is definitely not a guess. How'd you find out? Only people know what I'm paying are L&P management and me. You know something? I don't think there is an L&P management. Every time I call up to get something fixed, I get this dumb recording. Oh, yeah, that dull guy saying L&P management. When you hear the tone, you will have 15 seconds to state your problem. Beep. <laughs> I don't have any problem I could state in 15 seconds. I can well imagine. Well, it doesn't make any difference. They never call you back, so you wind up fixing whatever it is yourself. Right. You know something? That voice has always reminded me of somebody. You know who it sounds like, Phyllis? It sounds exactly like Lars. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does, Phyllis. It sounds just like your husband. No, it doesn't. Phyllis. Phyllis, does the L in L and P management stand for laws? And the P for Phyllis? You manage the building? Well, it saves a little on the rent. Oh. What? Besides, it only takes a few minutes of my time. It doesn't take any of your time. Phyllis, I distinctly remember the time my sink was backed up and I was calling L&P. You were standing right there and you said to me, why don't you call a plumber? It'll be quicker and easier. Well, wasn't it? Yes, it was also $28.50. Well, I couldn't fix your sink. What about Lars? Well, he's a dermatologist. If he'd been any good with his hands, he would have been a surgeon. <laughs> well, Mayor, what do you think about moving in together? Uh, Bad idea, huh? I tried it a couple of times after college. Yeah. Only one thing can happen when friends move in together. You're right. Oh, the girls I room with used to drive me crazy. They kept coming in saying, tonight I became a woman. Do I look any different? <laughs> and I have to look at them. Phyllis! I am not looking at her tiles. Take off your tiles. Your time's up. No, my pups are done. Besides that, I've had this word here for hours. Exmirsis. I-X-M-I-R-S-Y-S. Exmirsis? Sure. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on, Phyllis. <laughs> what is... I don't believe this. Don't tell me anybody as up-to-date as you are on psychology doesn't know what exmirsis means. Oh! oh! You're trying to get by with ox mirrors. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Which I happen to know is not a word, Rhoda. Right. All right. Ex oh, I'd love to get her in a poker game sometime. <laughs> Shrimp pop. Mary? Yes. I just got my expense account checked. There must be some mistake. Oh, what's the matter? Well, it's for only half the amount I submitted. Oh. Well, Ted, I'm sorry, but I just couldn't approve all the items on there. For instance? Well, I don't remember everything, but you listed $23 in tummy aids. That's right. Well, uh, what do tummy aids have to do with your job? Well, so many people on my crew have stomach problems, I sort of hand them out as a goodwill gesture. They're not for my personal use. I never have any stomach trouble myself. No, but you're a carrier, Ted. <laughs> Oh, Lou, uh, there seems to be some disagreement here. I'd like to review my last month's expense account with you. Some other time, Ted. I don't have the stomach for it right now. <laughs> Tummy eight? Thanks. See? Don't go away, Lou. I'll be right back. No, he's incredible. Last month, he tried to get reimbursed for shoe shines. Shoe shines? He says when his shoes look dull, he feels dull. So that's it. All this time we've been suffering. And all we needed to do was get him a pair of patent leather pumps. <laughs> Does anyone know where the tape is? Yeah, it's usually on the second shelf. Uh, what, are you selling something, Mary? No, there's an apartment that's come available in my building, so I thought it'd be nice if somebody here at the station needed a place. Do you know of anyone who's looking for a really Mary! great... Mary! Will you step into my office? Yes, sir. Hello? Later, Ted. Later.
say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you mind if I ask why I just said thank you? Not at all. You were just saying there's an apartment available in your building. And there's a person here at this station who just happens to be looking for one. You thanked me for warning you. Warning me? Well, who is it? Ted. Thank you. <laughs> oh. You, oh. Are, you already thanked me. But helping you avoid having Ted Baxter as the boy next door is worth an instant replay. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't have to thank me. Ah, to get that bulletin off the board. Mary, are you the one with the apartment? Come on, Mary, tell me all about this apartment. She just told me about it. You wouldn't be interested. How much is it? Uh, it's really not a good buy. How Ted. much is it? Especially with that rotten heating system. How much is and it? And then the carpet is... How there, much is it? It's, uh, hundreds of dollars. How many? Uh, more than two. How many more? Uh, Twenty-five. 225. You're right, Ted. It's too much. That's 17.50 less than I pay now. And they're going to add ten dollars a month. That's why I'm leaving. 17.50 times 12, 10 times. 12, Normally 10 he can't 10. add six and four, but put a dollar sign in front of something, and he becomes a computer. That's 330 dollars a year savings. I could buy a couple of suits with that. Or a fantastic shirt. Where can I see the apartment, Mary? Oh, well, Fine. I'll see you right after the show. See, it ends at 7. Five minutes to take off the makeup, 15 minutes to shower and change, taking 25 minutes to get there. I'll see you at about 7. 7. Put a dollar sign in front of it, Ted. 7.45. Well, Mary, why couldn't you have told Phyllis not to show him the apartment? I called and I got LP. You have 15 seconds to state your feet. Yeah. Well, you gotta know she's gonna rent it to him. I know, I know. And you know something? I am really gonna miss this apartment, all my friends. It's You're sad. You're sure you can't make the rent 250 No, it is 225 Mary, he thinks the apartment is perfect. I didn't say it was perfect. If it were 220 it'd be perfect. 225 Then Ted. it's not perfect. Oh, Ted, uh, did Phyllis tell you why the other tenant's moving out? No. <laughs> Mary's dancing drove her out. Oh, yeah. Rhoda, look. Mary, please, it's all right. It's not her fault. Her flamenco teacher can only fit her in at midnight. <laughs> no, that won't bother me. I sleep like a dog. <laughs> like a dog? Did I say dog? I meant log. Oh, good. For a minute there, I pictured you on your back with your little paws up there. <laughs> but I do think that dancing stuff should bring the rent down to two twenty, two fifty. Oh, Rhoda lies. It's still two twenty-five. Hmm. Maybe I can make it up in gas and oil. You know, Mayor, you and I could drive to work together in the morning. Only use one car. Uh, mine, I suppose. Well, sure, no sense in using mine since you're driving in anyway. Ted has a point there, Mary. Phyllis, nobody asked you. Oh, well, I'll, I'll be down in my apartment when you decide, Ted. It's still 225. <laughs> Say, you know, it's just going to be terrific living in the same building with you two girls. Every time I need a button sewn on or a shirt iron. <laughs> It's expensive, two twenty-five a month, but what the heck? I just know I'm gonna love it here. <laughs> See you later, neighbors. Do you have any empty cardboard cartons? I was just gonna ask you the same thing. Oh. Boy. Well, the front page has that effect on me too. I was looking at the for rent ads. You know, I never realized what a great apartment I have until I started looking for another one. Well, look at it this way. With Ted moving in downstairs, you don't live in such a great place anymore, right? Hi, oh, right, could you send a mail boy up to the newsroom? Thank you. I'll take that. I've got some stuff to go to. Oh, there she is. Working your little heart out to keep us up to date on the happenings in the world. Hi, Hi there. Hi, Phyllis. What are you doing here? No, happy to see you. No, what a pleasant surprise. I'm happy to see you. What a pleasant surprise. Don't you want to know what I'm doing here? Yes. <laughs> well, I came to see Ted. He asked me to stop by with his lease so he could sign it. Ted signing his lease. And we are there. <laughs> Mrs. Lindstrom? Hello there. Here's your lease. Not till my lawyer has a crack at it. <laughs> You're going to have a lawyer look over a simple lease? An ounce of perversion is worth a pound of cure. <laughs> Ted. Ted, you better get your shoes shined. <laughs> they do look a little dull, don't they? Dull? 
They look absolutely stupid. <laughs> Good morning. Ah, uh, here you go, kid. Uh, watch the way you talk to this young man. He's my attorney. <laughs> Mr. Lee, this is Phyllis Lindstrom, the building manager. How do you do? Uh, Murray Slaughter, one of my writers. Mary Richards, my neighbor to be. Uh, how long have you been practicing law, Mr. Lee? I haven't yet. I'm in my second year of law school. Oh, uh, well, then you have gotten to leases, have you? Oh, sure. Lease is simple. I'm into heavy stuff like breach of contract, assault with a deadly weapon. <laughs> I'm all for giving you the chance. That's why I put Mike here on a retainer. Two dollars an hour and two cents a mile. Two <laughs> cents a mile? That's enough. He drives a motor scooter. We, uh, knock off all this dumb talk and get going. My sensitivity group meets in half an hour. Uh, Lou's not in. We'll use his office. Uh, no, no, you won't. Why not? You know he doesn't like anyone in there when he's not there. Oh, all right. In that case, don't tell him. Come on, gang. <laughs> all right, Ted, go ahead on in. But if you're still there when Mr. Grant gets back, I am not covering for you. I'm coming in with you. Mary, what are you going in for? Now, look, Mary, I miss seeing Armstrong land on the moon. I'm not going to miss this. <laughs> uh, Mr. Grant. What? Baxter was sitting in my chair. I hope I've made myself clear. You don't want Ted in your chair. I don't want Ted in my office or the rest of his merry band. I don't blame you at all for being upset with him, Mr. Grant. I'm not upset with him, and I'm not upset with you. I'll be upset with you if that ever happens again. Right now, I'm not upset. Well, I am. I am upset. You're worried about Ted sitting in your chair. I am worried about him becoming my neighbor. Those people were in here to watch him sign his lease. Mr. Grant, he's moving in. <laughs> well, maybe it won't be so bad. Uh, maybe it won't be so bad. Do you know he asked me if I use all of my morning newspaper? I wonder what for. He doesn't read. <laughs> it's for his dog. <laughs> then he asked me for my phone number so that he could give it out to his friends for when he's not home. And he would like me to answer Mr. Baxter's residence using an English accent. <laughs> Murray? He signed yet? Good. I'll be right back. Oh, uh, I have an idea. Why don't we go and finish this in the hall? No, 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 no. Please. I didn't realize the importance of what you were doing. Come on back in. Please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on, gang. This is getting a little wearisome, isn't it? <laughs> Can I go in too, Lou? Of course. Lou. This isn't a trap or anything like that. <laughs> Go ahead, Ted. Take my chair. Go on. All right. <laughs> oh, so, have you gone over the leash yet? We were just starting to. Mm -hmm. I'm Michael Lee, Mr. Baxter's attorney. Oh, hello. hello. You really went all out this time, Ted. This one looks like a senior. <laughs> Gentlemen, as I stated before, this looks like a standard form lease. Uh, don't jump to conclusions, Mr. Lee. These things will fool you. Well, this one does have a no-pet clause. A no-pet clause. Oh, Ted, and you have that adorable little dog. Oh. How many years have you had her now? Eight years. Oh, gee, what a shame. And it did seem like the perfect apartment for you, too. I'll sell her. I only bought her as an investment. Somebody told me Dockstones were going to catch on. <laughs> okay, counselor, go on. 
Well, just the usual stuff. You pay first and last month's rent. Last month's rent? He hasn't lived there in the last month yet. Right. I'll pay the last month when I live there. All right. I'm sure I can get the owner to waive that. All right. Give me the pen. Um, say, uh, Mike, what's this $50 cleaning fee? Oh, well, that's a $50 cleaning fee. Uh, <laughs> cleaning fee? I'll promise to keep clean. I'm a clean person, aren't I, Mayor? Well, yes, Ted, but I'm a clean person, and I have to pay a $50 cleaning fee. You don't have an attorney. It doesn't matter how many attorneys you have. You, you have to pay that. Counselor. Well, now she's the manager. She must know about that stuff. <laughs> well, that still doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right to me either. Do you hear that? And Lou never agrees with me. <laughs> Gentlemen, I you assure you... You stay out of this, kid. I'm listening to a, to a grown-up who isn't charging me a dime. <laughs> what do you think, Lou? Well, I think the way things are going, this will end up costing you a lot of money to move. How do you figure that? Look, I can rent this apartment to lots of people. Wait, wait a minute. What, Lou? Well, all these hidden fees, they're sneaking in on you. Then there's movers. You're going to have to hire them. And they charge you, oh, uh, $20, $30 an hour, double time for traveling. There goes a few hundred bucks at the very least. A few hundred dollars. Mm. Don't forget the cost of installing a new phone. I did. I did forget that. <laughs> and you'll have to have new checks printed. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Baxter, this all seems to be in order if you just want to sign. Are you still here? Your time is up. Don't you have a class or something? Yes, yes, I do. Um, I'll send my bill to your accountant. Is he still going to Wilson High? <laughs> yes, but you better send it to his home. Uh, very good, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. All right. All right. I have made my decision. I have decided not to afford this place. I can, but I don't want to. Sorry, Mayor. Nothing personal. I'd love to bring this bunch over to my group therapy group. <laughs> See ya, Phyllis. Oh, Mr. Grant, I feel like a giant weight has been lifted from my shoulders. I just don't know if I'll ever be able to tell you how much I appreciate what you just did for me. Anytime. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Work. Hi, Phyllis. Why don't you let yourself in? <laughs> well, I, I knew you were here, and I didn't see any point in bothering you to get up to answer the door, so I... Uh... Oh, oh, Phyllis, that wouldn't have bothered me. Well... I can just stay a minute, but I just wanted to tell you that I rented the apartment. Oh, really? Well, I hope it's somebody nice. All of them are nice. All of them? Five airline stewardesses. <laughs> Five airline stewardesses. That's great. I was just saying to Mary, what we need in this building is a bunch of cute, young, attractive single girls. <laughs> They're just darling looking, too. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Phyllis. <laughs> Four blondes and a redhead. Goodbye, Phil. Cute little figure. Goodbye, Phyllis. Not whether it's over 21 or 22. Goodbye, Phyllis. <laughs>